Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be taking a look at analyzing resizable bar on Radeon and GeForce graphics cards. So similar to the last video that I did uh, where we were looking at the CPUs and how resizable bar scales on Intel Core and AMD Ryzen CPUs, now we're going to be looking at the GPU side. So if you're interested in this content, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Uh, and if you wanted to check out the previous video, then there's going to be a link in the timestamp above. So just to answer the question of what is resizable bar, because oftentimes people just kind of think, uh, you know, should I turn it on? Should I turn it off? Um, is it actually worth using? So essentially what it is, is it is a PCIe feature. So PCI Express has this feature now. It's been out for several years now, but essentially what it does is it allows the CPU to auto negotiate the base address register. So base ad address register is what the bar acronym stands for in resizable bar so that it can allocate frame buffer in you know the entire frame buffer amount so above four gigabytes typically and before that without it the cpu had to essentially talk to the gpu or address the memory the vram on a gpu in 256 megabyte size chunks whereas with resizable bar it can auto negotiate bar sizes much much higher than 256 so you know like above 4g for example and that's the reason why when you go and look in the bios to turn this feature on one of the settings that you have to enable prior to being able to turn on resizable bar is another setting in the bios called above 4g decoding and what that means is that it allows kind of like 64 bit addressing space so above you know like 4096 so kind of like if you guys remember back to the days of windows 7 and uh, windows xp and windows vista back when there was 32-bit operating systems and then they became 64-bit operating systems a lot of that was or a lot of the advantage with going to 64-bit was being able to address memory sizes above four gigabytes so it's kind of a similar concept here, but it's more talking to, it's more about the CPU being able to address the VRAM as opposed to what we were talking about a few seconds ago, which is more like system RAM. So the test system that we're using is going to be a Windows 10 based PC. So I do all my tests on Windows 10 because it is still the majority share of the gaming market so if you look at like steam hardware surveys for example the vast majority of steam users are still using windows 10 i myself am still using windows 10 when i'm playing my steam games so i know windows 11 is one that a lot of the other reviewers tend to test with and that is a relevant way of doing it but i think that this video is unique in that it does show windows 10 results because not a lot of other uh, videos out there will be showing like windows 10 as a test rig. So the motherboard we're using is a AMD based motherboard. So this is a Gigabyte uh, X670E Aorus Master as shown here. Uh, the cooler is a Noctua NHD15. So this is kind of like if you watched my uh, previous videos on building a PC, like the I usually showcase this hardware. So we're using 64 gigabytes of G-Skill Ripjaws at the uh, Expo or XMP profile, which is 5600 megahertz. Uh, so that's two 32 gig sticks. Uh, and then we have a MSI MAG AI 1300P. So this is a 1300 watt power supply. It's the new PCI Gen 5 power supply. So it's ATX 3.0 capable. The graphics cards that I'm testing, so for Radeon, we're using the RX 7900 XT. Not the XTX, but the XT. Uh, and then the GeForce RTX 3090 Ti. So the reason why I'm testing with these two GPUs is because these two GPUs are very, very similar in terms of their overall performance. So the tests are done at stock configuration with power limits and force. Memory is running at the XMP profile, like I said earlier. So this is to kind of give people an out of box look at what you can expect these results to look like without doing any sort of overclocking, any sort of undervolting, manual tuning, none of that stuff. So this is for those that really just want a game and they want to know, is this feature worth enabling or not? That's basically what we're looking at here. So the first game that I looked at was an Unreal Engine 4 based game. So Borderlands 3. So I, what I try to do is I try to test with a lot of different game engines. So I don't want to just test a whole bunch of like UE4 games because that kind of skews the results. Uh, one way or the other so i kind of want to hit you know like a lot of different engines so that way i don't need to do so many different games but i can 
get a lot of variety in terms of the engine. So here we're looking at a UE4 engine, this Borderlands 3. So not a super new game, or it's not a super old game, so it's kind of in the middle. So these are the results with Resizable Bar turned off. You can see 1080p, you know, the XT does really good in this title, or the 7900, and then the 3090 Ti is kind of behind it here uh, with Resizable Bar off. So if we turn Resizable Bar on, now you can see both GPUs see a pretty big bump in performance increases. Like if we go back here, you know, the Radeon card didn't change that much, but it still did see a performance uptick. Whereas the GeForce card in this case did scale pretty well. You know, we're talking like 178 at 1080p up to 190 and then 140 to 148. So it did see some pretty decent scaling kind of bridging the gap there between the two GPUs. This kind of shows like Resizable Bar is is uh, beneficial for UE4 games. So here's another game, uh, also UE4. So I wanted to get at least one other sample. So this is Godfall. Both of these games are available on the Epic Game Store because Epic, you know, UE4. So the results here are kind of flipped. So in this title, the 3090 Ti does better than the 7900 XT, particularly at the lower resolutions, but even at 4K, it still has a small lead. Then when we go and turn on Resizable Bar, both of them increase the average FPS, but again, the 3090 Ti is able to maintain its lead. So this is an example of a UE4 game where the NVIDIA GPU does a little bit better, whereas Borderlands 3, the AMD GPU does a little bit better. Next we have Horizon Zero Dawn. So this one is a very unique game. It uses the Decima engine. A lot of people don't really know what engine this game uses. They just kind of assume that it's so oh, it's some proprietary first party engine for Sony PlayStation. And that's essentially what it is. But this game has been released on the PC. So that does give us a good sort of test case of what these sort of console ports from first parties look like when they're on the PC. So with the resizable bar off, you can see that this game, the average, so the Radeon card is doing better in pretty much every metric except the minimum at 1440p and 4K. There, the GeForce card does better, but at 1080, the minimum on the Radeon card is better. So it's kind of, the minimums are kind of all, all over the place. So let's see what happens if we turn Resizable Bar on. So now when we turn it on, what I noticed that was interesting in this title is the minimums improved. So Horizon Zero Dawn, we got better minimums in addition to better average and maximum. So what you guys see here is the maximum. I record the maximum here just to kind of see because this engine is a unique one. It's not a UE4 based game. So overall, you know, the Radeon card does do better in this title. And I, some people like to say that's because this is a port from PlayStation and PlayStation is RDNA 2 based or at least PlayStation 5 is. Uh, but this isn't really a... RDNA 2 based game like this was this was originally released in 2017 on the PlayStation 4 so this is again that is still AMD hardware but you know the drivers on Windows for Radeon is nothing like uh, the drivers on a unified memory architecture on a console so regardless of that like the AMD GPU does do better in this title uh, next I tested for spoken I've been kind of doing a coin toss of whether or not I should include this game because this game is really really weird it really skews results in a bad way for both GPUs so you can see with resizable bar off the this is the results and what's really weird about this title is the 4k and the 1440p results are so close it's almost like there's some kind of game engine bottleneck happening because it doesn't really it doesn't really match like other titles and how they behave when you go from 1440 to 4k um, so then when we turn on resizable bar you know it just doesn't really scale in fact like the results at at uh with our resizable bar on are worse than they were at uh resizable bar off so it is barely different like in some cases the i think the geforce card went up by one fps at 1080p but then like nothing else really changed. In fact, all the other results were worse with Resizable Bar on. So if this game is kind of the outlier. It seems like it's always the outlier in all my tests. I don't know if the game itself just needs some sort of optimization patch because it just 
doesn't scale properly and it's really really hard for a lot of people with lower end hardware or older GPUs to run this game um, and I don't think that narrative has changed uh, several months after release so next I tested Shadow of the Tomb Raider so this is an oldie but goodie now you know a lot of other reviewers showcase this game for a lot of tests so here are the results for sizable bar off the RDNA 3 GPUs are massively improved over the RDNA 2 ones in this title. Um, you can see here, so it does beat the 3090 Ti at 1080 and 1440. Uh, and then it kind of pulls back at 4K dramatically. That's kind of where it uh, falls back. Still winning by a small margin. And then at Resizable Bar enabled settings, you can see the gap kind of closes up. So this is another one where the GeForce card does benefit quite substantially by turning on you can see like especially the 1440p so the 1440p on the 3090 tie was 170 and then it bumps all the way up to almost 190 so it did have very good scaling at that resolution for this game next i tested final fantasy 14 and walker so this is a really good game to test for a lot of reasons one it uses a completely different engine from the mainstream so it's using crystal tools which is kind of an old engine um, this is the same engine that was used to develop the final fantasy 13 trilogy for those wondering so it's kind of old it's very dated by today's standards because it is more of like a seventh generation era for going by console generations more like a ps3 era engine but it does show that with a dx11 build because this is testing with dx11 you do have very similar performance with resizable bar off between both the geforce 3090 ti and the radeon rx 7900 xt so then when we go and turn on resizable bar doesn't really change too much they both do slightly better but again, it's one of those older titles, you know, that they're kind of already maxing out the rasterization performance on both GPUs. And I will mention that this, for those that don't know, this game, the actual game, is an MMO. So this is a really good test because I think that MMOs are very, especially modern MMOs, but MMOs in general are very good at showing you CPU bottlenecks in particular and as well as GPU bottlenecks, because especially the Endwalker benchmark does a really good job of testing CPU bottlenecks specifically and GPU bottlenecks. So it's very much like kind of like a 3D Mark test suite in how it does its actual test. So I think this is an excellent one because it's not UE4, it's not Unity, you know, it's not some generic engine that everybody uses. It's its own thing and it's a really good popular game. So it's a very good uh, test case. Uh, and last, I tested Far Cry 6. So this one's the Dunia engine. Uh, not a whole lot to say about this game. This game does definitely favor the new Radeon card. The Radeon card just outright wins with Resizable Bar off. And then when you go and turn it on, you know, it's just the same story. It doesn't really change the narrative. The Radeon card is still ahead. So, But it does kind of show us, uh, in particular, the maximum. So we went from like 249 at 1080p to 264 uh, and then you can see kind of like the averages did go up as well although we did see like a one fps margin of error regression at 1080p on this card uh, whereas the geforce card also saw one fps regression so it's kind of weird like they didn't really scale that much with this game so anyway the overall results so with the resizable bar off these are kind of like the averages across all the games and when we turn it on this is what the averages look like so we did get you know, at least at 1080 and 1440, we did get noticeable increases. 4K, not so much. Um, you know, like one FPS average move at 4K. So that's indicative of the GPUs themselves being the bottleneck. And the resizable bar feature doesn't really help that much at that resolution. It just does help, but not, not, not that noticeable. So if we talk about the average percentage increase from enabling resizable bar... So this is what I found very interesting because a lot of people say that smart access memory, uh, Ryzen plus Radeon results in like massive percentage increases across the board. Well, with the tests that I did, which were a lot of different game engines, that's not really the case. At least that's not what I found for my own testing uh, with stock settings. 
So what I found was that the GeForce card, in particular the 3090 Ti, saw a 6% increase at 1080p from turning on a size of a bar and a 4% increase at 1440p, whereas the Radeon card at 1080 only changed by 1% on average and saw a 3% increase. So they both saw good scaling at 1440p, and that's kind of the resolution that I see both of these graphics cards excelling at for the next you know, two to four years. Um, that's kind of where I feel like if you have one of these two GPUs or a GPU that's of similar performance tier, 1440p is kind of a, a good long-term resolution, and we do see good scaling for both GPUs at that resolution. So for those interested, here are the across-the-board averages for turning on resizable bar for all the games tested in terms of percentages. So we did see massive increases for Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, for all of the GPUs, but the GeForce One in particular saw big gains in Horizon Zero Dawn uh, in particular. And I think Horizon Zero Dawn and Shadow of the Tomb Raider are the two in particular that kind of t contribute to allowing the GeForce card to have that big 6% increase at 1080p. So that's kind of shown here. Uh, I also did look at the percentage increase on the minimum FPS, and this, is, this was interesting because the Radeon GPU... The one game where it really benefited on the minimums was Horizon Zero Dawn. That game, you know, we saw like a 20% improvement in minimum FPS at uh, 4K on the Radeon GPU. Whereas on the GeForce card, the Horizon Zero Dawn results were the only ones that stuck out. Like everything else was kind of, you know, anywhere from negative 1 to plus 1 increases or decreases on the minimum. Similar with the Radeon. GPU, uh, but Horizon in particular, you know, we saw massive, like almost 80%, so 79% increase at 1080p, but then we saw regressions at uh, 1440 and 2160p, so kind of like weird in this in the case of Horizon Zero Dawn, but everything else is kind of in line with what I would expect. So in conclusion, I would say that if you have a motherboard and a CPU that supports resizable bar in the BIOS, I would just go ahead and turn it on and just set it and forget it. Like, it's going to give you, on average, at least with 1440p and these kind of GPU performance levels, like anywhere from 1% to 6% on average performance improvements, regardless of whether you're on Radeon or GeForce, both of them benefit. So I think, I guess the TLDR is that if you have a motherboard that has resource bar, go ahead and turn it on. Don't even think twice about it, just turn it on. If it's not on already, and then just kind of forget about it. It's just there. Because I think like a lot of the newer motherboards for both the AM5 platform and the Intel LGA1700 platform, like those all enable resizable bar by default now. So if you are upgrading to one of those platforms, you probably don't even need to worry about checking whether or not it's turned on. Um, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions about the testing or a different game or whatever, GPU, that sort of thing. So with that said, I'm going to end the video. And thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.